So we decided to take a family vacation. We're actually up in Cape Cod off the coast of Massachusetts. Just a delightful place. I really love Cape Cod. I've been here before and I really like it. It's, it's great. Um, it's such a nice summer vacation up here. It's just one of those idyllic places you can come for a summer vacation, but shh, don't tell everybody because then everybody will want to come. Now, the thing is when we came up, we decided to fly and uh, we flew up into New England and we rented a car. And uh, it's the first time we've traveled since I got the Tesla. So it was kind of a weird moment getting a, a rental car and going off and doing something. Now, it's not to say I haven't rented a car before because I have a couple of times, but it's in an area where I'm familiar. So I was like picking up my son at school and whatever. So I'd need a car and I'd, I'd go get him. Um, so I'm familiar with the area, so no problem. But this is a situation where I'm driving in more or less unfamiliar terrain and I don't know the exact direction. So one of the key things is active safety features, because there's a lot of pedestrians here, really important. The car I got, the Dodge Journey, has no active safety features. It has a backup sensor that tells you if you're close to something, and it also has a backup camera that's an older style backup camera. And that's it. There is nothing else on board that car. It has really no electronics to speak of. There's no Apple CarPlay, no Android audio interface, no built-in map, no anything. So I'm resorting to using my phone to get my directions, which I don't mind, but it's just, you get so used to having the Tesla with that big screen and the directions and everything, and even my wife's car with the Apple CarPlay where I can just look at the screen and I can see where I'm going, that you really wind up missing that. It's kind of a strange thing when you, when you think about it because I've gotten so used to having it on my Tesla that I can't, I can't adjust to it exactly. Now, since this is the first time we've really traveled since I got the Tesla, it's kind of a weird feeling, right? It's that kind of strange thing. I'm like, have to get used to this idea of having a car in a different location where I can't find my way. It's kind of, kind of strange. So it's taken some real getting used to. Now, there was a funny story the other day. We had to get gas. So we looked up, oh, where's a good get price for gas? And we found out there was a stop and shop that had a reasonable price for gas. So I put in the stop and shop into the map and it routed me to the stop and shop. And wouldn't you know, in most, in most of Cape Cod, it's small towns. So there aren't a lot of duplicates of anything. You might find a couple of stop and shops around, but in any one city, there's probably not two stop and shops. But it turns out in this one city, there were two stop and shops. One of them had the gas station, but the one that I found that I routed myself to had the Tesla supercharger, which I found kind of funny. I'm standing there and I go, wait a minute, I have the supercharger, but I don't have the Tesla. It's kind of funny how that works. And that got me to thinking about, you know, kind of how many cars are out there on the road. And as I was driving along, I'm looking and I'm kind of keeping track of how many cars I've seen in different places and how many Teslas and different areas. Now here on Cape Cod, it's early in the season. So haven't seen a lot of uh, visitors. It's kind of a uh, slow season still. It hasn't really got picked up yet. So I'm still kind of waiting to see how many people show up. But at this point, I don't see a lot of Teslas. Now there are the superchargers and there are some Teslas around, a few here and there but not a whole lot at this point. I guess that's gonna change over time. And that leads me around to thinking about what's happening with Tesla and its car sales. Now, Tesla tries to sell in all 50 states, but 10 states have specifically banned um, having car sales of anybody who doesn't have a dealership, you know, a true dealership in the old world sense of having a dealership with cars on the lots and so on and so on. So there are 10 states that outright ban them and there are eight states that have restricted sales and the number of Tesla dealerships or you know showrooms that they can have is limited to a small number. So that leads states to do unusual things. So, or Tesla to do unusual things to accommodate the states. So in the case of like Connecticut, Tesla has a, a situation where they, uh, they go out and they can let you lease a car, but they can't let you buy a car. So you have to go to another state to actually buy it. And a state like Texas, especially funny considering the fact that Texas has the Gigafactory now, you can't actually buy a Tesla in Texas. You have to actually buy it from one of the neighboring states. And they have an arrangement worked out where they still pay the taxes in the state and whatever, but you have to actually get it from out of state and it's shipped into the state and you can pick it up. There's some weird rules around it, but it's just weird the way they do it because these states have these strange relationships with these dealerships and the way they work. And it becomes these very unusual sort of activities where you have different um, criteria for what cars can do. Now, a lot of the 18 states that are on that list have bills introduced in the legislature that would allow Tesla to sell cars there. Um, now, how soon that happens or whether it happens is anybody's guess, but the principle is certainly there that it's coming and it's just going to take a little time to get there. So just an interesting problem that I, that I noted that I just wanted to share with you as I was kind of thinking about Tesla and its relationship with these states. And part of the reason we don't see so many cars in some states is simply because of that.
A quick word about that Dodge Journey. It's really strange that they have this giant display right in the center console, but the display only gives you a giant number with the radio station and a little information about what's playing on the radio, and that's it. Regarding the Teslas, as we were there a little longer, we started to see more Teslas popping up different places, so it was, in fact, that we were just too early in the season. It start, they started to come on the island a little more after that. The other thing we saw was a lot of Toyota Priuses. They were everywhere. Um, saw a lot, of, lot more of those than I did Teslas in the time we were there. Regarding the stop and shops, this is a little graph of all the stop and shops that are around the peninsula. And you can see there's a number of them, but they're kind of spread out a little bit. It was just kind of funny that we wound up at the one that had the Tesla supercharger. It was just kind of a strange and quirky thing, but it was kind of neat that there is one there. So it's easy to get to where you want to go somewhere within Cape Cod. All right. So the question I have to ask is, is it possible to get all the way to Cape Cod in my Tesla without having to worry about charging? So let's go ahead and do this. Um, where we were staying in Cape Cod was Dennis, Massachusetts, that one there. Boom. And let's let it route me up there. It's 1,200 and so miles. If I were going to drive there, could I actually get there um, by charging, knowing that there's a supercharger uh, along the way up in uh, just outside of Dennis? And the answer is, the yes, answer I can. Right. So that's pretty cool, actually. So I could actually take it up. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 15 charges when I'm, when I'm there. So it's a long, it would be a long journey. It wouldn't be in any way easy, but it could be done. And the first charge is actually because I'm not charged to 100% right now, so it's telling me to stop in Delray. Um, if I actually had a, um, had a little charge in there, uh, if I were at, to, at 100 right now, I suppose I could probably go further and then this would change a little bit in terms of the way that works. But so it's a 20 minute charge, a 30 minute charge, a 30, a 20, a 35, a 30, 25, a 25, 25, 20, 15, 25, and 20. Okay. And then I get to, uh, to Dennis like that. So interesting. So I'd wind up in Rhode Island be the last time I charge and I could supercharge when I'm there. Now, the total trip, um, now that I know it's 1,500 miles, it would take 28 hours. It's not something I want to drive, but I wanted to see if it was possible to do it, given where I am and the fact that my car can actually make it there, and there are superchargers in that area. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit and see the superchargers up here. So where, it's, where it has me, this would be the last charge it has me making, that's the uh, Rhode Island one. Um, so that's there. And then the uh, supercharger that I found must be this one. Oh, okay, it's, that's my destination. But um, let's go ahead and let's cancel the trip. Let's go back in to Massachusetts here. Okay, so when I was up here, what I noticed was, okay, that must be a destination charge. Oh no, there's a supercharger in Orleans. I did not see that one. Interesting, there's another one up there. Did not know that, huh. And uh, that's the one I saw in Hyannis. And uh, there's apparently one down here too. P. Hmm. Did not know that. That's really interesting. And um, I did see a, I did see that one with a sign with some signage, but I didn't go buy it. Um, I remember seeing it when I was looking at it, when I was looking at the uh, uh, destination somewhere, and I saw a sign for a supercharger. And interesting. So that's really neat to know. I mean, when I think about it, I'm like, hey, you've got four superchargers there on um, Cape Cod. That's pretty cool. And then you've got the one that's uh, that's outside Cape Cod here in Wareham. So if you needed to go to one outside, you could. And then you've got these, uh, these other ones here. So this is the one that was uh, in East uh, Greenwich, Rhode Island. So pretty cool. Did not know that some of those existed. I'm actually pretty excited about that. Again, not that I'm going to take the drive to go that distance, but it is pretty neat to know that I could go there just like that. Massachusetts is very green and they're very forward thinking in the sense of what they do. They have a lot of electrical vehicle chargers spread out a lot of different places. And as you can see, this one here, they kind of give you the message about what green charging is all about and why you would use electric. And I thought that was really pretty neat. And the fact that they're powered 100% by green electricity was really pretty cool. So I thought that was really neat. And this comment kind of hit home for me. You're welcome. And I certainly did enjoy nature. They also have a lot of solar panels on a lot of buildings throughout the entirety of the peninsula. You'll see solar panels a lot of different places that are powering the, a lot of things there. There's also a pretty significant wind farm that's around the outer banks of Massachusetts there. So you'll see them on the peninsula, you'll see them along the coast, and it is pretty neat that they're that much forward thinking.